Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 116, we're going to take another look at the E80 CC kit preamp. Well, we're going to take a look at how it sounds. We're going to have a test track that we're going to load up for you into the video. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Well, not long ago we did a tube lab in which we listened to our universal 6 or 12 SN7 kit preamp. And it was a big success. So this week we're going to listen to the E80CC kit preamp. The E80CC tube is an exciting audiophile grade tube that was invented by Philips in the early 1950s. So part of the large contingent of tubes, new tubes that were developed post-World War II. It is in many ways a better 12AU7 with lower noise, higher gain, and higher current capability. In fact, let's take a quick look at it. I've got one out here. Now this is the Tungs Ram version and it the Tungs Ram and the Philips version uh, are very, very similar sonically. The Tungs Ram is a little bit more commonly available these days and a little bit more affordable as a result. They are just beautiful tall bottles. You can see, of course, the twin triode plate structures here. The big difference between the Philips tube and the Tungs Ram is the Tungs Ram has a couple of holes for um, ventilation purposes and maybe even manufacturing, I'm not sure. Whereas the Philips tube doesn't have these holes at all. It just has a little tiny uh, gap at the bottom. Anyways. Um, I think the Philips tube also has plated pins as well. That's right. The Philips tube came in a, a couple of versions. Uh, one, the SQ or special quality version had gold plated pins and that's probably the most common tube Anything in the Philips SQ line is considered a premium tube. It was back in the day. They cost quite a bit more money originally. And of course, audiophiles seek out the SQ tubes. In, in a lot of listening tests, I'm not sure if I prefer the Philips or the Tungs Ram tubes. The Tungs Rams certainly hold their own. They're a very, very similar tube sonically. And they're both incredibly quiet and low distortion in this preamp. Mm hmm. Okay. So, when you combine a dual mono design, large oversized R core power transformer, and a low noise medium U or gain tube like the E80CC in a direct couple design, you get a unique sounding preamp with very detailed, clean, fast sound that's unique and addictive. Let's take a quick look at the schematic just to show you how that direct coupling works because it's really kind of neat. Now we're not going to spend too long here. Really this, this, this episode is about how it sounds. But here's your signal coming in. goes through a little coupling cap, 1.1 microfarad, and it lands on the grid of the first half of this twin triode, right? There's two tubes inside one envelope. And we take the signal off of the plate now, up until this point, everything is exactly the same as most gain stages you'll see, with some minor variations. But normally we would couple the high voltage DC that's present on the plate. You can see we've got 134 volts here. We'd couple it through a capacitor. The capacitor will block the DC and accept the AC signal. It's just how it works. I know it sounds like magic, but this is one of the key elements of audio circuitry. And in this case, we actually have high voltage present all the way onto the grid. So the DC is present here, and the AC signal rides on top of the DC. And one less coupling capacitor means one less thing in the signal path. And for audiophiles, that's a huge thing. The sound proves that the tube really benefits from a direct coupling. It really, it's amazing how clear and clean it sounds. And you're going to hear that in just a minute. 
Okay, let's put that away. And direct coupling is not something that every tube can do. The E80CC can do it, but something like the 12AU7 can't. Or, well, some tubes can, and can that's true. And some tubes squeal like a stuck pig, so it, <laughs> just don't start slapping tubes in and uh, direct coupling them and, uh, unless you're willing to blow up some tubes and get into a, a real pickle. <laughs> put, put the cheap ones in first. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's exactly what we do when we're bench testing something new. Okay, so our first, our well, test track number one is going to be by the amazing Norwegian singer, songwriter, and mu musician, Annette Askvik, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Liberty is the title track from her 2011 album, not su not su surprise unsurprisingly titled Liberty. <laughs> the source is our Astel and Kern Con Cube digital music player, which I absolutely love. The preamp, of course, is our EDCC, running new old stock Tungs Ram E80CCs. The recording device is our Zoom H5, set at PCM 2496. That's our highest recording resolution. And I've had questions when we did the previous uh, live recording. And no, there's nothing else in the signal path. That's, that's it. We're, we're taking the signal out of the preamp and we're record just these out these RCA outs would normally go to a pair of mono blocks, right? Well, instead, we're driving them right into the recording device. Uh, so you're essentially you're going to hear a very clean sounding digital source, and you're going to hear the tubes, and you're going to hear the preamp design. That's the beauty of it. And I would say the Zoom is a very good quality, neutral sounding recording. So you shouldn't hear too much of the Zoom in the recording. Okay, well, without further ado, here is Liberty. Our bodies are hurting like hell They promise to never leave us alone Our hearts are breaking like bones Picking stars like apples from the sky Threatening to throw them in the sea So we won't have anything to gaze upon What happened to liberty And the bridges we almost got done what happened to that was going to take us home Breaking like glass But faith is hard like stone Sometimes so hard to see When I lay down and forget this, you need to be telling me What 
what happened to liberty and the bridges we almost got done what happened to that was going to take us home what happened to liberty and the bridges we almost got done what happened to that was going to take us home Wow, what a great test track. It was originally recommended by a good customer in Australia. Liberty has many of the elements of a good test track. A quiet, high quality recording with excellent resolution. And the E80CC is an amazing tube when it comes to reproducing micro detail. We also have a lovely vocal presentation with some fun little micro details that are, well, sometimes great recordings will have these put in so that good systems can really shine and bring them out. They're sort of gift, small little gifts to audiophiles. And a great saxo that just sends tingles up and down my spine every time I hear it. I'm going to award 11 out of 10 to Annette and her production team for a wonderful recording. Well, what's happening over at Melatone Kits? Well, Progress has been slow on the headphone kit amp and the universal phono preamp. And, you know, the holidays, Charles got sick, the holidays got in, in the road, and um, we just came off a really busy period. So we slowed down for a few days, thank goodness. And before we can get back into the builds, we've got a GU50 that's got to ship. So that's a priority. We're just trying to get to it. And we've got lots of testing to catch up on. So we took yesterday, Charles, how many uh, G6SN7s did we go through? Almost 100, I think. Uh, somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, so it takes a long time. You have to clean, test, uh, and then sort and match. Anyways, that's boring, boring, boring. <laughs> Let's take a look and see what came in this week, talking about G6SN7s. <laughs> All right. Okay, Charles, you're up. Okay, so as... Dad just mentioned here, we got in a whole bunch of these beautiful GE 6SN7 tubes. These are the GTB version, although the GTAs look fairly similar. 
here's, let me get it on camera here, here is one of the standard ones with a halo or circle getter. You can see it right in the background here. And these come in a couple of different sizes of gettering. The, the halos are fairly common, but there's also a horseshoe type. But otherwise, the tubes are nearly identical to each other. They have that nice side gettering here. And these tubes are a fantastic cathode follower. They're very reliable, they're very consistent, but they also make great voltage gain tubes. And so we think they're a little bit undervalued, and we really like them. So here's, let me show you one of the boxes real quick here. I'm sure you've all probably seen the standard GE boxes, but they're pretty nice looking. Anytime you find an, a new old stock box, it's nice to have. And here, this one is another version of the same tube, but this one's a little bit more special. We've got the same getter ring on the inside, but we've got something a little special on the top here. Some of you might recognize this, and this is a filament bridge, which was present on some of these GE 6SN7GTBs. And we're going to light this up for you right now so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, and before you start thinking that that's going to be the ultimate version, they really don't sound any different. <laughs> they, they sound the exact same, but these just, they, they look really okay. nice. You go ahead and clip it on, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lamp you up. Okay, you ready? All right, let's take a look at this on camera. Okay, watch your fingers. Clear? Yep. Clear. Okay, I'm going to turn off the light. Take a look at that. Isn't that... That's gorgeous. I love those. And these are just beautiful to have in your system glowing away like this. Yeah, I think that's just so cool. So there we go. So that's what these guys look like. So we, we did get a small number of these in with the, the batch of the rest of the tubes. So if you're interested, let us know. Yeah, and we don't actually give them a separate number because there's, it's so rare to find matched pairs. So um, if, if you want one with a filament bridge, send us a note. If we have them, we'll send them to you. Otherwise, you're just lucky if you get them or you don't get them. Uh, everybody loves them when they do get them. It's a bit of a surprise. I have to put a note saying, don't worry, it's going to light up on top <laughs> like a Christmas tree. Yep, nothing's wrong with it, but yeah. it's going to look cool. Okay, I'm going to turn the power off. Okay. And turn the lights back on. There we go. There we so go. So that was a fun little demo. Okay. Let me clear these out of here. And if you stayed all the way to the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, we've got flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. And if yours is $150 or more after discount, the shipping is on us. And because we've been having so much fun and giving back so much money <laughs> on a secret code, I've decided to add another secret code. Now, I'm going to give you some... some how obvious should I be, Charles? Uh, not too obvious. No, you don't want to give back too much money. Okay, so if you make a large order, there's your big hint, there would be a standard code that you would expect to see somewhere near the top of that list. <laughs> or the bottom, however you're looking at this. Anyways, stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone.